I think. Yeah, we're live. Yeah, there it it's is. Late. We're live. It's mm-hmm. still technically Black Friday where we're at. We're live um, late at night. It's just barely Black Friday still. I know. <laughs> we're doing it again. I'm sharing this right now is what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. I I'm sharing it too, man. I'm in the share fail in the share phase. <laughs> All right, the share the share phase. I'm doing man, share we got phase, a lot to, we we got a lot to talk about, man. We really do. Um mm-hmm. you know, it's it's been a lot of um good stuff too. And so <clears throat> I think that will make for a nice, good, positive holiday themed um catch up, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I got some uh good clean, I know I've talked about them a lot. O'Malley's wings coming my way right now. Oh uh, man, so we will have to pause by the time they get here. Oh man, I can't wait. I can smell them already. <laughs> I can't even hear you. I can smell them already. Um, but yeah, I mean, first of all, let me ask you this: Did you know mm-hmm. that this is our one hundred fiftieth episode, man? <clears throat> yeah, man. I know. It's crazy. Did you bring it's anything crazy. to celebrate, or what'd you do? I just brought my smiling face. Wow, ungrateful. Yeah, I know. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> hold on, I, I prepared a special ode. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh god. Okay. You've prepared um, something. Hold on. Yeah. I mean, it is a momentous moment. It is. Well, let me make me, me, play. Yeah, let me make sure I'm in tune. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh God! I messed <laughs> my own thing up. There. Right? And then it goes. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. That's our special one hour fifty thing. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, we're just happy to have been able to do 150 of these, which is incredible. Yeah. Um, yeah. And really even is. though we haven't reached our target goal yet uh we are very much thankful that we're at where we're at you know i mean Mm -hmm. it's incredible that we've kept a a consistent following over time and and not only that Mm -hmm. but like transfer transitioning you guys over to the video content yep and built an even bigger following over there uh from where audio content is we're really more of a vodcast now than Mm -hmm. we are an actual podcast but <clears throat> it's been going really well. Um, just yeah, really cool. So, um, yeah, it's been good. Uh, we got a lot of things we want to talk about. Did some Black Friday mm-hmm. shopping day today. I did. Um, mm-hmm. <clears throat> obviously, Thanksgiving just happened, and um, I played a gig the night before. That was crazy, um, as it usually is with the cover band. Um, and yeah, it, it was. Uh, Good Thanksgiving as well. Just a lot of good things to talk about. And this, and I also know that, um, you know, we, we have a opportunity for an in-person catch up coming up very soon too. Yeah. Uh, which I'm very excited about. I might be down there on new year's, which will be a lot of fun. I can't wait for that. So, mm-hmm. um, be cool. but yeah, man, uh, my wings are arriving. <laughs> so <I'm gonna> <laughs> I'll be right back. All right. All right. <laughs> Have fun with Dennis and guys. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, welcome, guys. Um, anybody who's here. Um, so, yeah, you know, it's a 150th episode, which is insane and crazy and cool. Amazing what we've been able to do in this, I guess, at this point, three-year-long journey because we started in 2018 around 
around October or so. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it's pretty crazy, pretty amazing. Um, uh, where we've come and how far we've gotten. I mean, you know, we started off being uh, just on our podcast, like John said, you know, uh, to transitioning over to, um, you know, Facebook, having a Facebook page, then moving over to Instagram and having an Instagram page. And then uh, also, you know, moving the podcast over to YouTube and having um, our videos or, or, you know, our live stream uh, videos essentially be on um uh oh, it looks like my camera's freaking out on me. <laughs> but essentially, having our live stream video on um, uh, on YouTube, as well as having our um, uh, having you know having our website where we launched our merch, which we continue to have, and uh, you know you guys should jump on that, check it out. Yeah. Let me let me fix my camera real quick since it's uh looks like it freaked out on me for some strange reason. Uh, let's see. Um, I have to redo it. Do that. We'll go here. I think it's uh... but yeah, um so it's it's uh to be honest it's it's been pretty crazy. It's been pretty crazy, pretty amazing. Um I'm incredibly thankful for the audience that we have and um I think, you know, you guys, uh, your, you all's support has been uh, vital. There we go. I got the camera working again. It kind of freaked out on me. Uh, so there we go. Back as John is still getting his wings. But yeah, like I said, um, I can't be any more... Um, happy that you guys are, um, you know, that you guys have been with us from, you know, three years ago until now. And I'm so incredibly happy and, you know, I can't wait for another three more years. Um, I know what we want to do is try to plan something more uh, meaningful on our 200th episode. So it's going to be pretty cool. Um, but yeah. Uh, still waiting on Mr. John. Oh, it looks like it freaked out again. My camera did. Oh, there it goes. All right. Looks like it's having some weird issues. Anyway. <laughs> um, uh, let me see. I'm trying to think. So, yeah. Uh, if you guys are in the audience, go ahead and tell me about what's, what's going on. What was your, what was your Thanksgiving like? And if you're watching this back, you know, you can still comment on this video. What was your Thanksgiving? How was your Thanksgiving? You know, um, did you spend time with your family? Did you have a Friendsgiving? Because I actually had a Friendsgiving. That was cool. Um, did you, or a semi-Friendsgiving, <laughs> um, have you, you know, uh, did you get to fly home? Did you, Are your parents close, you know? Also, did you do some Black Friday shopping? Because I guess at this point now, uh, as of recording, um, Black Friday is over. But, you know, black this year's Black Friday is weird, which we're going to talk about later on in the episode. But, uh, you know, this Black Friday is a little bit weird and a little bit strange in how everything is. So, you know, I want to know your thoughts and opinions on how Black Friday has been for you. Um, and what it's kind of meant for you guys, because like I said before, this year's Black Friday was weird for me. Um, so yeah. Well, John's back now with his wings. 
Oh man, I had to. <laughs> well, I want to say first, you know, we see some of y'all comment after the episode's no longer live. Keep on doing mm-hmm. that, man. You know, keep on mm-hmm. doing that. Please do. I don't know. Did we respond to those from this past week? Um, I can't remember if we did or not. I don't know because um, I know I didn't because I was busy with the new job. But um, yeah, we keep on doing it because we'll reply to y'all either way. Um, mm-hmm. nine, nine times out of ten, so <clears throat> it really does do what we hope with this podcast. Just keep the conversation moving forward. You know. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Mm. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, my Those God. Those wings? Mm-hmm. I mean... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Look, they're basically gigantic chicken nuggets because they got boneless. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. <clears throat> oh, man. There's nothing better than O'Malley's wings, man. If you live... <laughs> In the Wichita area, you got to get yourself some O'Malley's wings, man. This is the uh, O'Malley's. <clears throat> some boom, boom, tangy right here. Mm-hmm. I've been repping this for a minute. Um, oh, my God. <laughs> some good stuff, man. Mm-hmm. So, you know, um, we did this a few weeks back. I'm talking about shop local, this and that. If you mm-hmm. live in the Wichita area and you haven't tried O'Malley's Irish Pub on 31st and Hillside, man, <clears throat> you're missing out. They have the best wings I've ever had in my whole life, ever. <laughs> I don't. I hardly ever go down there because I'm not trying to get a shot. But <laughs> I need to more often. They're a great place, great little establishment. Their food is bomb. I've been ordering this for over three years, trying different flavors every here and there. <clears throat> it's fantastic, man. I can't believe the time's gone by that quick, but my God. It's the bomb.com, man. This is my Black Friday shopping right here. <laughs> <laughs> this is some ancho chipotle. Get you a mm-hmm. good whiff. Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> you can almost taste it, can't you? I can. Um, I can. So, Definitely check them out if you're in the Wichita area. They are phenomenal. <laughs> and, um, yeah, every bite tastes better than the last. <laughs> 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 so, let's see. Darian says, uh, <clears throat> family Thanksgiving was all right. Extended family Thanksgiving was cool, too. Then do a lot of Black Friday shopping because I'm saving for some things, but I'm grateful for friends and family. That's great, man. Mm-hmm. That's great. That's uh, that's exactly how I felt this Thanksgiving too. Even though I, I did do some <clears throat> some shopping. Uh, we'll talk about that as part of the episode. But mm-hmm. this actually, <clears throat> I don't know if it's because of changing my occupation or what, but I actually felt like I was able to slow down and enjoy and appreciate the ones around me for the first time in several years. To be honest with you. Really? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, my job, man, <clears throat> was such a demanding thing. Um, mm-hmm. And that's not to say that new job isn't, but old job was, uh, you know, in news. So there's a lot of negativity that you're already covering, but then when you factor in certain people and their demeanors and their attitudes compounding mm-hmm. upon that. <clears throat> and it's just, you know, <clears throat> completely negative all around you, man. It, it's hard for that not to impact your personal life, you know? Yeah. So yeah. I, I feel like I have a little room to give for negative energy, positive energy, just where I'm at now. And I surrounded by good people, man, really honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I mean, or go ahead. Actually, no, I'll talk about that in the episode. I had an experience at work where I had to shout behavioral health the day before Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. It's pretty sobering, man. It really was. But hmm. maybe even thank more thankful <clears throat> for what I already have. And I think it'll be a good thing to share with people, you know. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> what were you going to say? 
Mm. No, I was just going to say, I was like, I, I completely understand that. And yeah, I'm going to talk about that as well. Um, mm. My experience for Thanksgiving, because um, this year was different than, you know, different year or than uh, years past. So it was, uh, yeah. it was really nice. And, um, and I want to kind of share that kind of experience just because I think it's kind of an eye opening. It's been an eye opening thing for me. Mm. Um uh, a thing for rest and stuff. So, but I've been extremely thankful. I'm not even going to lie for, for Thanksgiving and just uh, this time. So. Mm -hmm. Well, good. Um, let me get one more wing up in me. All right, man. All right. <laughs> All right. I just need one more. One more wing. One more wing. Oh. Okay. Here it is. Mm -hmm. Let's get it in there. Let me try to figure out how to start this episode off. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I mean, I, to be honest, you know, because um, we're going to talk about uh, if you want, I mean, we can always just, you know, jump into and kind of talk about our Thanksgivings. Um, since our main topic is kind of be like Black Friday and all that kind of comes with it. Uh, so we could kind of jump in with some with some talk of Thanksgiving, or we can jump in and talk about um, uh, kind of talk about uh, maybe some of the deals that we've seen or whatever like that on Black Friday wise. I uh, or if you want to go outside of that, we can also talk about um. Week or week leading up to, you know, Thursday and Friday. That's actually okay. Well, here's what I was thinking mm. do a little bit of that, <clears throat> kind of start off with, you know, the, the show from a perspective of people going out and partying on Thanksgiving week. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, then we can kind of say we're going to talk about more about our experience later <clears throat> and that kind of a thing. So let's try and do that. Um, I think that'd be good. Yeah, I'm cool with so, that. Let's do that. Okay. We're going to get started right now. <clears throat> there we go. Okay. Three, <laughs> two, one. I was playing this gig with Abandoned Kansas over at Wave the other mm -hmm. night. <clears throat> kind of mm -hmm. lost my voice, as you can tell. Kind of got a little bit of some snuffleupagus action carrying over, right? Oh, man. I know. It was a lot of fun. Here's the thing. It was like 90s themed. All right. So I talked the guys into wearing 90s related stuff. Now, <clears throat> Jeremy mm -hmm. outdid everybody, but he didn't um, He didn't actually change into it for the show. I was really bummed about this. He oh. had... From 1997, an original. It was not a remake. From 1997, a Reggie Miller jersey. In oh, the wow. Yeah, in the alternate Pacers jersey, too. The blue stripes with the yellow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I bet that is hard to find. <laughs> I bet that mm -hmm. is super hard to find. And he did not change into it, which I was bummed about. I, however, was wearing a Benford Tools tank top <laughs> from home improvement <laughs> um <clears throat> with a flannel button up over the top of it so i could not have been more 90s uh if i tried <laughs> but it was a lot of fun there were a lot of people out there a lot of friends actually uh samantha malillo haven't talked about her for a long time on here mm -hmm. she and i used to do a lot of duo gigs back in the 20 uh yeah pre-pandemic era yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> And she she uh, moved away for school, but she happened to drive back from Louisiana that day. And and anyway, just a lot of people. My brother, obviously, a lot of friends. Um, place was pretty packed for a while, and uh, we made pretty mm. good money, especially off pre-sale. Mm -hmm. This is funny, by the way. Uh, venue is called Wave. They host professional touring acts. Uh, they have two two stages: indoor. 500 people outdoor 3,200 people. Obviously we were indoor, you know, it's winter time and everything. Yeah. <clears throat> they made a post two days before saying, get your tickets while you still can before they sell out. 
Mm. They only sold 51 tickets pre-sale. <laughs> so <laughs> it wasn't really close to selling out, but um, there ended up probably being about 200 people there at the cap. Um, okay. That's, hey, but, that's not bad. That's a good turnout. It is. Yeah. No, it was, especially the night before Thanksgiving. But that that's kind of what I wanted to talk about. Um, undoubtedly, I, I had some fun of my own, too. Um, mm-hmm. But it was interesting to me. I've never done that. I've never been out the night before Thanksgiving. I've never gone out and done anything. You know, I always try to make that all about family. And yeah. Obviously, I was working, making making a living off of that, if you will. Mm-hmm. But uh, <laughs> these people, man, a lot of them are out just having a good time. There was one guy. I'm running through the crowd with my wireless system. And mm-hmm. I crash into him. His buddy was trying to help him across. Oh. I, I only hit his hand, thankfully, but mm-hmm. I sent his drink soaring through the ground. Like, <laughs> it soaked me. It soaked like four other people. <laughs> but um, <laughs> it was thankfully it was only water though, because his buddy was mm-hmm. trying to help him sober up. And I apologize, whatever. I'm still in the middle of this song. I like apologize. Mm-hmm. I go back up on the stage. And I was like, man, uh, and I'm looking out and it was like, not a minute later, this dude just like eats dirt, <laughs> like collapses, Aww. trips over nothing. He was having a hard time. Um, <laughs> and, and so it was interesting to me, man. I mean, you know, we talked a lot about like Thanksgiving. We're going to talk more about it later. But to me, it's it's not. Some people look at it like a four day weekend, you know, mm-hmm. whereas. I look at it as a time to reflect and then spend time with family, right? You know, yeah. <clears throat> and, and it is inherently a four-day weekend because of that. But people look at it differently, you know, like going out to eat, going out to get drinks, going to a concert. That's why there's a market for what we did. I don't know how do you feel about that. It just it was it was weird to me to experience it. I guess for the first time in all my 27 years, <laughs> you know, what I mean, <laughs> yeah. Um... Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know. I think I think you're right. So I think uh, my perspective, my perspective on it has changed because, <clears throat> well, slightly changed. I have to preface it by saying that slightly changed because it it um, it. I do feel like you know Thanksgiving and even like the day before Thanksgiving is still very much about like family and and like a more of a togetherness type deal than. Um, then like, oh, it's just a three day week or a four day weekend or whatever like that. Um, but I will say this year I did have a little bit more of a perspective, um, just because, you know, my job changed and stuff. Um, and this being, you know, the first, um, the first year really where I've had both Thanksgiving and Black Friday off, um, it kind of changed the way that I thought of it. Uh, and I did kind of see that aspect of like, Oh, it's a, it's a four day weekend. Right. You know, yeah, it's like, right. I don't get that all the time. Now that didn't yeah. mean that I was going out and going out and partying, but you know, at least right. it was just a, I don't know. I felt like a, a higher sense of like relaxation kind of come over me. It sure. sounds weird, but it's kind of, yeah, kind of how I felt. So I, I get that. And no shame on anyone who did take, part in drinks giving it's literally one of the busiest Mm -hmm. nights if not the busiest night uh out of the year and and like i said no shame on anybody that did i'm glad you did because you came out to our shows um and you know (laughs) it was a different experience for me too uh but i i guess i've always just approached it differently just because i i don't know i i guess i really can't explain why but that uh, just never been on my radar before um Mm -hmm. but it was it was good that a lot of people came out. Now, what was interesting too, is a lot of people left early and we actually wrapped up early because <clears throat> amazingly, I would say probably from midnight, let's say there were 200 people there mm-hmm. and then 1245 or one, let's say in an hour, right? There's mm-hmm. 20, <laughs> there's like 20 people there, man. It, it was oh, almost man. no one. <laughs> yeah. There's almost nobody there. Like, we literally could have person to person conversations with the crowds at that point, (laughs) you know? Um, (laughs) And and part of that was probably because it was the holiday the next day. Sure. But yeah, 
I think another part of it was um, it, 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 there have been there's been some crime in Old Town recently, man, and mm. this is why I always, you know, I even though I'm not in the news anymore, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and I think that's had a profound effect uh, on how I view things, but. You know, I, I'm still want to stay up to date with the local news. It's very important. It's very important to know what's mm-hmm. going on in your community. You know, it is. <laughs> and they they have a highly important job, and and uh, you know, local journalists deserve way more than what they get for sure. But yeah, there's been if you remember, we were doing a podcast late night, much like this, and I found out there had been a mass shooting at a club downtown. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. There's been weird little things. There's been fights after sh- every show. Just about every show we've done downtown, there's been a fight. Did not happen at the last one, so that was good. Um, but there's just been something like that. Well, I was hanging out with a group of people less than a week ago. Uh, we were mm-hmm. downtown. Blake Ellis was with us. Great friend of the show. We need to get him back on mm-hmm. here, actually. Um, mm-hmm. But but he, you know, we were hanging out with these people, and this girl. Uh, in this group, said, or she tells me the next day, her best friend had left just before I joined them. Mm-hmm. And she actually got stabbed on the way to her car. Mm-hmm. And and she was walking by herself, you know, which you, you shouldn't do, especially and just unfortunately so, especially as a female, you shouldn't be doing that. Um, mm-hmm. <clears throat> but that's that's how people who are going to do this thing, these type of things, that's how they that's how they approach it you know yeah um, exactly and so and she wasn't even in a dark secluded area she was on a hmm. uh it's basically douglas and saint francis but douglas is one of the busiest downtown streets in wichita it, it's where this mm-hmm. started i heard that she ran to a nearby restaurant they didn't let her in because they didn't know what was going on <clears throat> and then uh she got oh, stashed you know and she got taken to the hospital. She ended up being okay physically, right? Mm-hmm. But, um, but yeah, this guy they they arrested him and calling him a person of interest. So it's not even a suspect, right? Just person of interest, mm-hmm. which <laughs> but, doesn't um, make any sense. But well, it's because they were able to identify him on security cameras, mm-hmm. being in the area at the time. She cannot identify who it was because it was dark mm. and has, has hood up. So um, anyway, just crazy stuff like that. You know, it's like there's there's mm. no motive that we know of, you know, nothing like that. And so I think that has taken away from people wanting to go out and understandably so. But it sucks because we're trying to provide a safe haven for people to forget about stuff like that for a while with music, you know. Mm. Yeah, yeah, but that's true. But you know, what were you gonna say? Well, I was just gonna say that um, it's sad that that's happening. Um, but it, you know, it it seems like it's not even just happening because I'm I'm finding more and more like stories and hearing stories that it's, you know it's just like I don't know what happened, but like it feels like people have gotten a little bit more rowdy, rowdier. Uh, as we are slowly, very slowly coming out of the pandemic, um, because you know you hear that on planes, yeah. um, you hear it with, uh, you know, what was it? Uh, a few weeks ago, we already heard about the Astro World event. Um, what? Man, I'm, which was if, crazy. If, yeah, if the holidays had timed out differently, if our life changes had timed out differently, we definitely would have talked about that on here. But yeah, yeah, like you said, so crazy that people would just not even pay any attention to the people they just trampled, you know, just to yeah, watch Travis exactly. Scott. Well, and and it's it's um <clears throat> it's it's not just that it's like you know that I guess that's the biggest thing, right? It's like you know that happened. And sadly, people got trampled, but it was also that people didn't, people were so focused on trying to 
stay there if that makes any sense or at least i don't i don't know what the situation was exactly but i i feel like yeah. you know if i was in that situation i saw what was going on of course i would try to get help but i would also try to leave and vacate the premises as much as possible to kind of take Absolutely. myself out of that situation but if i'm not mistaken certain people weren't actually able to even move so mm. you know yeah yeah but well yeah no i just I just feel like something's going on. I don't know what it yeah. is, but like, I think like people had cabin fever so much that, um, I don't know. They just kind of like lost their sense. I don't know. You know, I, I, uh, I'm surprised people aren't tramping over the trampling over each other, uh, to see our podcast, especially with your <laughs> Travis Scott hairstyle. You got, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know you don't agree with me on that, but, um, you know, it's interesting because we grew up in a time period where it was very popular to say, well, this is certainly worse than it used to be, or this isn't like what it used to be, or these kids, you know, it was so, I mean, we heard that everywhere in the early 2010s, man, you know, mm -hmm. but I can a hundred percent unequivocally say uh, and this comes from a standpoint of working, the, having worked in the news for over six years and being out in the community a lot, you know, during that mm -hmm. time as well, um, whether it was music or work or whatever, things are worse now. They genuinely are. And yeah. I can say that for Wichita, Kansas. I don't know about everywhere, but you see a lot of the same types of things happening in a lot of different places. And I don't know what it is either because there's no excuse for cabin fever. If you live in America now, like you've been yeah. out of lockdown protocols for so long, you know, <clears throat> um, I think people just lost their minds. I think it's, uh, you know, some of that political propaganda that's been put out there um, mm -hmm. of, you know, taking your rights away and all that kind of stuff. I mean, places like France, They've been in and out of lockdowns, in and out of lockdowns, you know, and they mm -hmm. just they follow that. But you know, I I could not. I mean, I I couldn't wait until the first show that I got to play uh, after mm -hmm. I was vaccinated. You know, <laughs> yeah. um, I played a couple before then, but they were kind of dive bar areas. It just you know the clientele didn't really quite care that there was a pandemic to begin with, but. Yeah. And that's fine. You know, I'm not, again, I'm not trying to sound like I'm being harsh on anybody. Um, but it, it's, it is what it is. And these are circumstances that you, you deal with, but I couldn't wait till we played our first band show and we were all vaccinated. You know, we're like, Oh man, it's going to be great. And mm -hmm. you're just sure that it'll only be a matter of time till everybody in the crowd is like that too. You know? Yep. And um, that just hasn't happened, but that was back in April. And so, to yeah still use that as an excuse man i i just i agree with you i'm not disagreeing with you but that it is weird that that yeah seems to still be affecting people for some reason they're just like trying to yeah. make up for lost time i um, guess I, yeah yeah I, I guess it's yeah it's it's just you know like i said it uh it surprises me it really does yeah um because um like, I don't know what happened. I, really I don't know. Don't. <laughs> I'll tell you another story. After our last Brickyard show with the band in Kansas, some friends of mine were leaving, both female. Mm -hmm. And they're mm -hmm. walking to their uh, car. We were all going to go, a whole group of us were going to go out to eat. So they're leaving. And uh, one of them ends up calling me and telling me that the plans canceled because, long story short, they were walking out. And this was a uh, night before Halloween. Everybody's in costume, right? So this guy is in mm -hmm. his car and he's yelling at three women, cussing them out, telling them to get back in the car. <clears throat> and one of these two, one of my two friends says, Hey, you can't talk to women that way. Why? And look, I'm going to say this too. I've mm -hmm. noticed this in Kansas. This is a Kansas cultural acknowledgement. More mm -hmm. people I know up here are likely to say things like that than any of the people I grew up with in Texas. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. very much so, and this could just be a matter of the people I grew up with, 
uh, in, in like closer circle. But it seems like mm-hmm. we acknowledge that if it's not our business and it's not escalated to a point where we need to step in, we don't, <laughs> right? We yep, exactly let whatever it is take its course. And that's not what was happening here. So she says, hey, you can't talk to women that way. This guy gets out of the car, runs over, shoves her to the ground. Then six to three girls that he was yelling at on her and my other friend. <sighs> it's so weird. Like, yeah, that's that's crazy. Like, I don't, yeah. I don't I've never I would be so confused in that situation because it's like I was at least just. If I was that person, right, I'd be like, I was just trying to stand out for you, and now I'm getting beat up by not by you. just, yeah, I'm get, I'm not getting beat up just by you, but also like the other dude who was yelling at you, like how is it that you guys are coming together to beat me yeah. up <laughs> for right. trying to stand up for you? I know, like le- um, legitimately. <laughs> if I didn't know these people, this is a hilarious story from the outside looking in. You're like, what yeah. just happened, right? I, I can't I can't wrap my head around it. like still to this day I can't wrap my head around this guy turns his I can't uh, no and so he's like next thing you know just cussing them out and like these these girls it's like uh, Dracula and like his harpies right like I, I was just <laughs> crazy <laughs> they're just swinging on both my friends and so some of my other friends they're um, a bit older than me they're married. And they come around the corner and the guy just runs and intervenes, breaks the whole thing up and uh, stops it all, which was great, you know, but they <laughs> just like, what? And, and to me, that almost it's, sounds like a pimp. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, it, it feels like that. It really does. Um, because that's like a bizarro moment where you're just like, I don't know what's going on anymore. No, I know. You're like, wait, what? I was trying to help you. You're getting smacked around. Yeah. <laughs> but that kind of stuff, man. I mean, like, granted, if anything like that is going to happen, it's probably going to happen the night before Halloween because people already think they're in costume anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, but super weird, dude. Just super weird. I'm like, I, I don't know. So, yeah, to your point, I think people are – being a bit pent up. Um, and what's unfortunate about that is it's preventing other people from going out <clears throat> and enjoying really this entire past weekend. Everywhere I went was dead. I mean, completely dead. There was no one there. And, and it's um, <clears throat> the weekend before a holiday weekend. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So yeah. normal circumstances, these would be busy times. Um, but yeah, there was no one anywhere i mean it's just odd and i think it's because it's catching on that things like this are happening so anyway i was glad to bring the show to people i had quite a wild time myself um Mm -hmm. but it was fun i actually broke a string like halfway through the first set and so i had to switch guitars i finished that song on five strings and i switched guitars and only used one um and switch between tunings all the time with that one but it was good. It was a good show. <clears throat> good to be black back over at Wave and uh mm-hmm. have some fun over there. But we got some things we want to talk about. Today was Black Friday. Um mm-hmm. as of the date of us recording this. And so mm-hmm. uh day and time. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. So uh <clears throat> yeah, I I <laughs> I've had quite an experience with it. And what's interesting <laughs> about this particular year is how the pandemic is impacting it even more so than it did last year. Um, mm-hmm. Yes, we can all get out and shop and go to the stores and everything, but there are longer term impacts. And actually I'm kind of suffering with it personally right now. So it's really mm. interesting. Uh, we definitely want to talk about that. And then we want to share how our Thanksgivings went and what, happened uh that has really made this year something that we're extra thankful for so yeah we want to talk about all that and more let's get into it <clears throat> i'm glad i pulled that together i almost forgot what the catchphrase was <laughs> <laughs> i was like i was like wait what do i say let's jump into it <laughs> 
Here we go. I again. could I could kind of. It's funny. <laughs> I can kind of hear and see the gears turning in your brain of like, there's something else that's supposed to come after this. I yeah, just can't like remember a, right now. Yakata, 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 yakata. <laughs> You're just going there. <laughs> yeah, I'm stuck in neutral. I like couldn't shift out, man. <laughs> yeah. No, I uh, I did feel that very much. Actually, I wanted to ask you, have you watched mm. Nah, I was actually we'll fit that into our discussion. I'll fit that into okay. our discussion. No problem. Okay, okay. Yep. <laughs> I'm not even worried about it. You know what I really want? Some mo wings. <laughs> some mo wings, man. Some mo. Uh, <laughs> do I do it? No, nah, it's too much setup. All right. Let's mm-hmm. go ahead and get into it. All right. Three, <laughs> two, one. What's going on, everybody? I'm John. And I'm Dennison. And this is the catch up. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Boom. Boom. This always goes back to the original. It always goes back to the OG. If you guys go back to like our first sixty-three episodes, maybe. Um. Yeah, you'll hear that good original podcast beat. It sounds like it came straight out of an eight bit video game. It is pretty hey, fire. Based off, no, no, no. Listen, listen. It sounds like it came off of an eight bit video game, but James Jamerson from Motown <laughs> is playing bass on that thing, just yeah, ripping man. the bass. <laughs> yeah, when it hits, when it hits that bass line, bro, that's where it hits. It starts kicking it, man. That's I know. Like, hey. James Jamerson is just <laughs> slapping it. So, yeah, it sounds like Denson goes back to this all the time. He always references it. Playing, yeah, it sounds like you're playing Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, but James Jamerson's doing the bass line on it. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to admit that's where I got the inspiration from, but it's kind of true. Um, <laughs> why can't you get on board with the new one, man? I just think there's a lot going on with the new one, like when it hits the breakdown. And it's it's harder, I find, like, sometimes... Uh, to lock into the group? To, to, yeah. <laughs> Interesting. That's awfully yeah, man. musically analytical of you. <laughs> I'm impressed. Yeah, man. Uh, hey, there man, is. It's, it's just how it is. That's like, why it's, I kept it's the- great to listen to, but, you know, trying to, yeah. trying to do it as, like, a... Uh, as like a sing along, <laughs> it's a little bit uh, Yeah, that's why I kept the uh, the beat on it or the the bass on it so simple on the new one because everything else is going mm-hmm. crazy. But man, that drum that boom, kah, boom, kah, uh, kah. oh man, it's wild. What a groove, man. What a groove. Mm-hmm. Well, agree to disagree. Um, before we <laughs> jump into our topics, man, we want to let you know whether or not you like the old catch up intro or the new one. Uh, you can find all of our episodes, all of our videos, and all of our merch on our website, nosignalrocks.com. That's my band. There's also a page for the Catch Up Podcast on there, and it is linked in the description of this episode. We are live streaming on Facebook right now. We all ha- already had a conversation with Darian, um, mm-hmm. even though this is a late night, <laughs> late night episode. So thank you for mm-hmm. jumping in on that, man. What we love is when people get involved in the conversation in real time, have a conversation with us and direct the direction. I'm just repeating myself right now of this episode <laughs> uh, in any episode as we're doing it live. So we would love for you to give us a, a like, a follow on there. Uh, that's facebook.com slash the catch cast. We also have exclusive video content going up over on our Instagram and our YouTube page. Uh, mm-hmm. So you want to follow that there. Instagram.com slash the catch cast. Or just follow the Catch Up podcast with John Dennison over on YouTube. Um, mm-hmm. And we also have an email, which Dennison is very excited to tell you about. 
<laughs> of course, of course. Yeah, no, it's the uh, you can check out our Gmail, which is uh, the ketchup cast at gmail.com. That's the ketchup cast at gmail.com. Uh, you can, you know, reach out to us, um, you know, tell us how we did on the episode. You can also communicate to us, you know, if you had any topics that you wanted us to cover, as well as uh, if you have a topic that you want to cover yourself and you'd like to be featured on the podcast, that's also a great way to get in contact with us. Um, you know, we, we love hearing from you guys and, you know, our email is a great way to do that. So, yeah, please uh, shoot us an email and we'll we'll try to get back to you as best as we can, as well as, um, you know, if you have a, a topic that you guys want us to cover we will try and do we will do our best to feature that you know um i've said this many many times but you know we really want to try to um grow this community that we have and and we would love to get to a point to where we could have like a community dry uh, fully community driven episode right um, I mean, it's amazing that you guys jump in on the live streams, but we kind of want to get one to where, you know, the community has someone, a member from our community has, you know, sent us in a topic, we cover that topic. And then at the same time, you know, that whole episode is from like, say, we have like a bunch of topics that we get and we try to go through each of those and stuff like that. And then at the same time, we're doing a live stream. So then you guys can interact with us on that. So um, it would that's, you know, kind of one of the big goals that we want to try to do um, as we grow this. And, um, you know, sending us an email is just that one step further or that that first step to get to that point. So, um, yeah, you know, please do. And, and everything Denison said is echoed across all platforms, too. We want you to mm-hmm. reach out to us on any and all of them, to be quite honest. But yeah. um, I also want to say that maybe... This is an idea that we could do. Put out mm. a question on all of our social media platforms. What do you want to hear us talk about? What comments do you have? What, <clears throat> um, you know, what what would you like to hear featured on the podcast? And then we take that and then put it into an episode. You know, yeah, um, yeah, that's true. So keep an eye out for that in the coming weeks. Um, mm-hmm. well, might as well just do it this next week, man. <laughs> you yeah. Know? Might as well. So yeah. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, as you listen to this podcast, we'll post it and have it up throughout the week. So um, be sure to chime in on that. You'll see the instructions, and uh, we'll get you involved on this podcast. So mm-hmm. wanted to talk about uh, today. The day of recording this again is Black Friday, and to be honest, not something I always take involvement in. And actually, I don't know if Denison and I have ever both shopped on Black Friday. Denison used to be very much not black friday am i right do i remember uh, that right sometimes uh yeah i mean i was usually not a super avid black friday shopper just because uh i usually found that deals about two weeks before black friday were usually better than uh some of the deals that you would get during black friday they just i always saw it as like an illusion um that they kind of created to make black Friday seem more, uh, legit, I guess. (laughs) If that makes sense. Right. Uh, Yeah. I I feel that. Um, and surely there's a awful lack of legitness on this, right. (laughs) (laughs) Um, in some places. Uh, but you know, I, I truly have not always taken part in it. Uh, you know, there's a lot of times that, a lot of industries have even better sales throughout the year. Right. Um, mm-hmm. But it always seems that when those sales come around, I'm not looking then either, you know? So yeah. this time I wanted to do something different. I have a lot of change going on in my life, a lot of positive change um, <clears throat> and slight reference. <clears throat> this is the time to plug the debut album. <laughs> <laughs> If you can old see it on your screen. Yeah. Yeah. The old faithful. Yeah. It's uh time to plug the debut album changes uh, by mm-hmm. myself. Truly. I'm going through more. So I might have to do a changes part two. Um, <laughs> <that's all laughs> final, by the way. Can we just, just take a look at this? Hold on. Sorry. Actually. 
forgot I did all this. Look at that. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. It's on vinyl. Mm-hmm. Only the OGs get that. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, man. <laughs> so, um, going through a lot of changes. New job uh, and moving into a new place, finally. So, this whole backdrop is going to look way different in the coming weeks. Um, <clears throat> but with that said, you know, I haven't lived on my own for quite some time, actually. Uh, mm-hmm. Man, close down three years, which is hard to imagine. But, you know, between the pandemic and, and different financial things, uh, it just wasn't feasible until now. So I'm very excited. But that also means that you have to buy a lot of things that will allow you to be comfortable and host. Now, if it were up to me, mm-hmm. actually, this this poses a great question. Let me hear what your thoughts are. Mm. What do you feel like is the bare minimum that you could live with i'm talking furniture i'm talking amenities and if if it was your own place Mm -hmm. and you didn't think you were going to host anyone what is the bare minimum that you would have you know that is a great question so bare minimum right i could i could deal with like a one bedroom uh, apartment if I know I'm not going to host anybody and it's just going to be myself. So it'll be one bedroom apartment. Um, I'd say, you know, 700 square feet is perfectly fine. Um, I could do, you know, of course my bed, a couch, uh, my computer desk and, uh, TV, TV stand. um, Maybe like a TV movie tray or something like that, uh, or a coffee table. Um, trying to think if I'm gonna go bare minimum, uh, and then of course, uh, I would need high speed internet. Um, that's true, that's true. That, that's a necessity, man. That's not that's mm-hmm. a necessity. Uh, everything else, man. And, you know, I can just take the on take with the, of course, electricity and water and stuff like that. But, uh, I think everything else, I think I'd be fine. I mean, the rest of them are nice. They're nice luxuries or whatever like that. As long as I got a bathroom, you know, toilet, we're good. Uh, yeah. otherwise, yeah, bare minimum. I'd be good. Man, that's too I'm rich for my blood. <laughs> that's too rich for my <laughs> blood, man. Too rich for my blood. I <laughs> um I would have a bed, a TV wall mount. Mm-hmm. Um we'd probably have to, yeah, we'd probably have to do Wi-Fi for sure. Uh mm-hmm. and that's it. <laughs> that's it, man. That is, that is it. I would that's probably have it. my bed in the living room. Okay, um, so you have a studio. Right, yeah, basically. You go for a studio. Okay. Yep. That's it, man. I would I would be chilling in my bed, eating McDonald's in my bed, watching <laughs> football from my bed, right? Mm-hmm. With the Wi-Fi streaming it on YouTube TV. That's what I would be doing. Right? <laughs> so don't get it twisted. If I knew that I was living on my own and never having anybody over – you just see me in my underwear in a bed with the TV on. Like, that's it. That's all, <laughs> that's all you would well, see. Man. Well, see, see, that's the thing, man. That's the reason why. I, and I guess technically, yeah, if I wasn't going to host anybody, I probably would substitute the couch for a chair. I just take me a good yeah. old chair, a nice, nice comfy chair. But I just can't. I'm not a big fan of. um eating in my bed so that's why i need I something it. else to to sit in man i can't explain this but i love eating in bed i don't what? get it okay even weirder you're gonna get I'm crumbs gonna get... everywhere yeah, I, can eat. I can pick them up later i can eat them later <laughs> now look you know all seriousness i it's even weirder though i don't like having breakfast in bed in fact i hate having breakfast in bed um mm-hmm. Because when Which I wake up, because you said you like eating eating in bed, so yeah, but I'll eat I'll eat any other time in bed. But I like to wake up, get out of bed, move around, see what's going on in the big beautiful world and all who inhabit it. 
Um, mm-hmm. and, <laughs> and, um, you know, if I'm confined to bed, I don't like that. I'm not a fan of it, but, um, man, if I come home late at night, have some food, eat in my bed, mm-hmm. throw it in the trash and pass out. <laughs> I, love <that. laughs> I love that so much. It is amazing that I somehow have a slender build still. Um, <laughs> Yeah. So anyway, the reason I ask that, I mean, obviously I am having to equip my apartment that I'll be moving into. So I am in fact moving into an apartment. It's kind of a studio ish, um, mm-hmm. has an attached garage. I'm very excited about it. It's going to be a great, great place. <laughs> um, I, I don't really know if you could get one much better in the area for the money, especially. Um, mm-hmm. so very cool. Very excited. It, <laughs> um, so I, I'm getting a couch, right? Is one of the main things mm-hmm. I need. Now I have a lot of stuff that I had from the last time I lived on my own that I'm going to carry over and bring out there. Um, but Black Friday shopping was tough. I haven't actually seen the unit yet. Mm. Um, I haven't been able to. They don't have one that's available for touring right now. All I can oh, do is, annoying. yeah, all I can do is trust based off of how impressed I was with lesser units that weren't mm-hmm. what, what this is. And then the floor plan, that's all I can do. That's the only thing I can do to trust this. So, um, yeah, I just, it was tough for me to shop for it. And I realized really the only thing I could get right now is a couch. You know, I couldn't do a coffee table or an end table. Uh, mm-hmm. I have a whole bunch of due to my new job, um, I'm a communications and, and social media specialist for a local health clinic. Um, mm-hmm. Federally Qualified Health Center, FQHC, mm-hmm. is an acronym I've been hearing a lot about lately. Um, and they uh, supplied me with the office equipment. And so I don't know what that's going to look like in the space, what would complement that. Just a mm-hmm. lot to consider, you know. And yeah. so it was, it was tough. So I have a quick story for you on the uh, the couch, okay? Okay, okay. I'm buying this couch. Kind of hard uh, to decide, especially when you're not able to sit in all of them and you're trying to make an impulse decision on mm-hmm. Black Friday, right? Yeah, <clears throat> so, worst time. Yeah, so I'm basically just trying to do whatever I can <clears throat> get my hands on. And... Um, that looks good. And I, I can trust it'll be comfortable. Now I'm not hundred percent sure if I set in this or not. I think I did. It looked good. It felt good, etc. Um, And so I, I buy it and mm-hmm. then it says you want to create a membership. And I thought, you know, it might be good, especially since I'm living on my own, this Ashley home store. Uh, mm-hmm. It might be good to have an online account with them or whatever. So I go into that and I create the account and blah, blah, blah. After you do that, it takes you to the orders page and it says, you have no active orders at this time. And I was like, what? Right? No active orders. I check my email. There's no receipt for purchase, anything like that. So I jump on their online chat. I start messaging this, this woman, Taisha is mm-hmm. her name. And mm-hmm. uh, she says, there's no receipt of your purchase at this time. She's like, are you sure that you're seeing it show up on your online bank statement? And I said, absolutely. I'm sure <laughs> I can see it <laughs> Yeah, right here. I'm getting charged for what I paid. So the sofa was a hundred dollars off. Mm-hmm. I also had an extra 10% off. Um, so I saved about $150 in the sofa. So I'm like taking photos of my screen to show how I did all this. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I was like, man, guess i have to i don't know what happened might as well buy it again just in case that first one truly didn't go through for some reason so i go <laughs> buy the couch do the exact same thing get the deal blah blah purchase it also does not and this time i'm logged in yeah still doesn't show up in my order history <sighs> so not long before we started recording this podcast i mm-hmm. get Two emails about 15 minutes apart confirming my receipt. <laughs> so oh, new no. couch is coming my way. This is Black <laughs> Friday shopping done right. 
<laughs> if I'm lucky, I get to cancel one order, but they've already shipped it out, and then I get two couches for the price of one. <laughs> 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 but um, yeah, and I can just chop off the ends and make it a sectional, you know? Yeah, there you but, go. Yeah, there you <laughs> go. That's called ingenuity. <laughs> but mm -hmm. anyway, so that, you know, that came from lack of experience for me, online shopping on Black Friday, because what it was, was their servers were overloaded with orders. Oh, okay. For sure. It, it took a while. And it even says in the email that I got, uh, please, or we apologize for any delays due to um, heavy, you know, traffic and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, well now I have to figure this out somehow. So <clears throat> anyway, um, have that. I also went ahead and bought a new laptop. Now this is for myself unrelated. The couch mm -hmm. was partly a Christmas gift. So I got help with that, which was great. But the laptop, was such a good deal. I got it for over 50% off is way better. Wow. If you're watching us on the live stream, you're going to be able to see me a lot less blurry, <laughs> mm -hmm. but I wouldn't get too excited because this is the thing. It's going to take, and I quote four plus months for me to get this new laptop. Despite my best efforts of ordering, <laughs> ordering the expedited shipping, by the way, <laughs> mm -hmm. I paid fifteen dollars for the expedited shipping. They don't. They can't even guarantee when I'm going to get this laptop because wow, of supply chain crazy. issues. Yeah, because of supply chain issues. So you're warned about this time and time again. And I'm walking through a lot of stores today. Pretty good deals on PS fives and Nintendo Switches. The Switches were like two hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. PS fives were three hundred. You know, not bad. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's especially. If you can I, find I, one, but that's the thing, yeah. Because I, mean, I can still remember when the PS3 came out, and that was like 850 ridiculous. Yep. Now you can get PS5 for 300 bucks, like that's a heck of a deal, but yeah, you can't find them, yep, because of these supply chain issues. Now, <clears throat> this goes back to things we had talked about earlier in the year. I admittedly didn't really understand the importance of it when Denison brought up the semiconductor chip shortages. So I was like, okay, yeah, that does suck, but we also live in a privileged world, right? <laughs> um, so if people have to wait a few extra weeks, poor them, right? Mm -hmm. Wrong. <laughs> Wrong, okay? Because here's the thing. I don't need my laptop for business yet. Um, it is going to slow the uptick of what I want to do with our online business next. It's going to slow that mm -hmm. next phase. But if we needed stuff like that, if we needed components like that for business, we would be screwed right now. We would be in really bad shape, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we were talking, uh, well, we, I don't work there anymore. Uh, my old news station interviewed a local business and he had been getting told by people in his industry since January to start ordering stuff ahead of time. So he's good for the holidays, but uh, industry insiders have known about this for a long time. And it's just interesting how now this is having a bigger impact on the uh, holiday shopping season than it did last year when the infection rates were higher, positivity rates were higher. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Um, you know, just to kind of speak on that, uh, so it's because uh, we weren't fully into the chip shortage yet at that point. Supply, we still had plenty of supply uh, to meet the demand, but the demand was starting to grow at that point in time. And then, uh, you know, 2021 came around, and that was kind of when we started to really start to see the breaks in the supply chain. You know, we have to kind of think of it as like, um, it's kind of like, uh, well, I mean, you can even think of it as like an actual chain, right? Really, really far out there and <clears throat> think of someone makes a kink in one of the chains, you know, really, you know, far, far back. Um, but you're still real in the chain. You don't notice that, that, that kink or that break or whatever like that yeah. until it finally gets to you. 
you know, and then you're like, oh, wait, this is weird. This is not working. And so it's the same thing. That's kind of what's going on with um, with everything else. You know, we the way our economy is and the way everything works is that it's it's like this amazing, well oiled machine that um, we have a lot of stuff that's ordered way far in advance. And um, it takes a little while for us to get through that supply that we already have. But then once we, once, you know, those shortages within that supply of those, you know, high demand orders that we get or whatever like that, once there are like gaps in those, it takes a little bit for us to get there. But once we're there, that's when we start feeling the pain. That's the reason why, yeah, when, you know, we talked about it earlier this year, why this was going to be such a big deal. This is kind of what we were seeing because a lot of economists were actually talking and predicting that, you know, Black Friday this year was going to be a lot different. And that's actually um, kind of going into our farther Black Friday stuff. It's, you know, that's also one reason why a lot of manufacturers uh, and retailers um, started their Black Friday sales earlier in the month. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would I would be interested to hear if anybody on the live stream watching it even after we're live um, mm -hmm. took advantage of those sales. I saw them kind of start to pop up in my inbox, but I didn't really pay much attention to it. Uh, <clears throat> we we had a whole bunch of warnings about this, you know, and a lot of people were told to shop ahead of time um, and even mm -hmm. get your shopping done by the end of October. Uh, and yep. retailers tried to push that for people by having them, uh, you know, order early and get everything done early, uh, by offering those sales. And I don't think people really took advantage of it. I would say probably because they weren't financially prepared for it. You know, if I had to guess, I yeah. certainly wasn't in a spot where I was like, I'm ready to buy for the holidays a month ago. You know, I wasn't right for that. Yeah. That was due to other things like, you know, getting ready to put a down payment on an apartment. But, um, but yeah, I mean, you know, I, I wonder if that had an effect. Do you think that it was almost like too much of a good thing or what, what do you think? Um, you know, I, I think, um, I think it really, it's a lot of it is just, you know, human behavior, right? Even though people are getting worn to, you know, shop ahead and people are starting to see the effects of, you know, the supply chain shortages and stuff like that, as well as chip shortages when it comes to technology. Um, I think you just kind of get stuck in that normal tradition, right? Of like, um, this is what I'm doing, or, you know, I always get my shopping done during Black Friday, or I always get my, you know, X done, uh, Christmas shopping, Christmas stuff done during this point in time rather than um you know pushing it out farther or doing it sure. earlier and stuff like that so i think i think to be honest i think that's kind of the biggest thing i know that's what kind of helped me a little bit too because i'm still you know doing christmas shopping and i tried to get some of it done early but um you know it's it's hard to do it, it really uh -huh. is because that's the other thing like like you said you really do have to plan like farther ahead because, you know, usually Christmas shopping, if you're doing Christmas shopping, uh, it's a lot of money, you know, uh, depending on how many gifts you're getting people um, and how many people you're getting gifts for. Yeah. Um, and so it's kind of uh, hard to have enough money. Um, it's hard to get, um, enough money scrounged together, you know, before the holidays or whatever like that. Because sometimes right. I know for some people, you know, that's when they're making their most money around those holiday times because they have something lined up or something like that. So, yeah, um, it's really weird to think about considering Bia so yeah. said there's a whole lot of money in this month, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, agree that it is kind of all converged at one time as far as uh supply chain and economic issues due to the pandemic 
Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> heightened demand because people not caring about the pandemic anymore. It's all, it's all kind of come together really at the worst time. And that is the holiday shopping season. Um, <clears throat> to be honest, you know, I, I did not expect to get, well, I'll put it to you like this. I hoped I would get the laptop by Christmas. I thought that was generous giving it a month to show up, you know, mm-hmm. uh, Man, I, I had no idea that it might be late spring, early summer before it arrives, you know. Um, mm-hmm. And here's the crazy thing. I want to shout out Lenovo real quick because <laughs> this laptop that I'm running all this on, I'm running this mic, you know, through an adapter. Uh, or not, I don't want to call it an adapter. It's much more sophisticated than that. But um, audio interface. uh running this camera, right? And then mm. uh, powering this ring light as well. And we're live streaming and we're recording all at the same time. And this is mm-hmm. uh, a 2012 laptop. Also not even close to the most expensive. This is an idea pad. It's their like consumer. It's really geared towards college students is really what it's geared. Towards. Yeah. Um, and that's what I got for. This was a, you know, two college gift almost. <laughs> and, uh, and man, I, it, it's really held up. So to take it to the next level, I'm very excited for this next laptop, but <coughs> uh, again, I'm, it's not a need as much as it is a want, but I didn't need to take advantage of the sale. Man, I'm glad I did because the next sale rolls mm-hmm. around. By the time that comes around, it'll probably be the time I'm getting this freaking laptop <laughs> in my house. You know? <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it's interesting. You picked a good year not to really do Black Friday. Now, um, <laughs> I also feel like Cyber Monday is going to be interesting. You know, um, mm-hmm. how are they going to do that? How are they going to handle sales for things that they either can't supply at all or won't be able to supply for months later? You know, how do they handle that? Yeah, I you know I I don't know. I think. I mean, I do think that some manufacturers stocked up, right? They stocked up as much as possible and retailers as well uh, stocked up supplies as much as possible. And I think some places are doing some sort of like a raffle type of deal to where it's like, you know, get in line fast enough and then you'll get this. I know like uh, for like PlayStation 5s, right? The... um, uh, like uh, if you're going to buy directly from Sony, uh, they have it to where you can get in the queue. And if you get in that queue, then you're guaranteed a PlayStation, right? Um, but if you can't, if you don't get in that queue, then you're not getting a PlayStation. And that's how they yeah. kind of, they're able to ration out how many PlayStations that they can do and making sure that it's getting to the right people. Um, because that is the other thing, right? Because I think, um, with all of these supply chain shortages, um, and I the rise of, and we even talked about this earlier, the rise of scalpers has yes. yeah. really escalated this year, especially if it's a hot, you know, hot button item or whatever like that, or not a hot, hot button, but you know, if it's a hot item that everyone wants, uh, scalpers are there and they've figured out how, you know, they figured out how to get through a lot of these systems to be able to buy like a whole bunch of them. And then of course they're going to sell it at a markup. Um, yeah. And absolutely. so it's just you as a consumer who is having to pay foot the bill for the extra amount just so that you can get your hands on, you know, X product or whatever like that. Sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I, you know, for me, man, uh, it's going to be tough to get people that I care about, like yourself, anything worthwhile for Christmas, you know? Um, mm-hmm. It'll be mm-hmm. a matter of finding yeah. the right thing, and and then uh, I just spent a crap ton of money on moving in a laptop. So <laughs> um, <laughs> I got two couches coming, man. Um, I, know, no, man. <laughs> I know, man. No, I'll get one of those canceled. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's an interesting holiday shopping season, as we said, because of this. I really am curious how we catch up. You know, if you're at a point where 
the delay is over four months for your product, right? How do you get caught up from that? You're going to have to produce such a surplus um, <clears throat> and then have these shipments be at such a high rate, you know, to get caught up. I don't even know how you do that. It's going to take yeah. over a year, I would think, you know. Let's say yeah, well, supply chain issues stop today. It wouldn't be till next holiday shopping season that we'd be fully caught up. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, that's the reason why, you know, especially for like the chip shortage, right? Um, a lot of economists are saying that, you know, they don't see an end to the chip shortage until like around this time next year. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, like you said, that's that's just the chip shortage ending, right? That's, you know, them catching up finally with production. That still doesn't mean that you're going to be able to, like, have a perfect surplus to where, like you said, where people can just grab and not have to worry about, like, well, I'm going to wait, you know, three months for my laptop or three months for my phone or whatever. Um, so, and it's the same thing with other stuff, right? Because it even if it's not electronic it's it's other stuff like we still have supply weird supply shortages when it comes to like we have plenty of the product but it's stuck on the boat because the ports yeah. are backed up um because of you know a bunch of stuff that happened uh in 2020 uh not just covid but you know we had the Suez Canal thing that happened, which backed up a lot of stuff and caused a lot of issues. And I and we are still seeing the ramifications of that stuff. Um, right. So that's the other thing. Like we have ports that are just not able to sustain it. And the only way is for us to finally get to the point where we can kind of catch up is to essentially buy new ones or create new ports or or something similar to that to where you can kind of alleviate the clog that we have and it's just a lot of that stuff takes time um it does yeah. i know um i know we talked about this earlier uh or you know in a previous episode or so and if you if you're if you listen to this go back listen to that one because that's a good one it was a really good one um but you know it's uh you know, uh, I think I, I saw, I read that like a lot of these manufacturers, especially when it comes to like semiconductors, right? Um, if you are to get a full factory built and up and running, it takes about a year or something similar to that. Wow. That's and still pretty fast. Exp- yeah, that's still really fast. You can that expedite is. the process. I think, I think that's more of an expedited process version <laughs> of it. But it still takes a long time for those things to get up and running. Um, and that's, I think, if I'm not mistaken, that was getting it all the way up to like 100% capacity. Wow. So um, if that's a year, right? And that's, oh, yeah. you know, going at breakneck, breakneck speed, then yeah, right. what is what is normal, right? So, um yeah. 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 So yeah, it, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it casts a big shadow on like how black Friday has been, or really I want to, I I've kind of called it as like black November <laughs> Yeah, um, seriously. because yes. yeah, because you know, they've, they've kind of, and this was smart on the retailers, I think is to try to help coerce uh, by uh, consumers to spend more earlier um, than just having it on one day. Um, it helped kind of alleviate some of the stuff, but I do feel at least for me and I'm, and I won't want to hear from you um, if that kind of took away some of the um, allure and um, fanfare that you kind of got with black Friday. Uh, no, I, I, I don't give a crap about that. <laughs> but a lot of people do, man. A lot of people do. A lot, you know, a lot of people they plan a whole like family gathering around it. You know, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. it's a I, thing. I know, it's a whole thing. Yeah, yeah. I know a lot of people that do that. You know, I I think if I had to guess, it may have taken away a lot of great sales because those great sales were offered earlier. There were so mm-hmm. many sales. It's just like $15 off, 
twenty dollars off that kind of thing i don't care about that you know i i want things like what i found with that sofa a hundred dollars off cool and i got an extra ten percent so it was 150 dollars off so that's great i like that but no nah, it didn't it didn't really change that for me um and <clears throat> i i don't think it really changed that for a lot of shoppers estimates say that they will actually meet the uh, pre-pandemic levels of black friday shopping this year actually go into the physical yep. stores um and that's good you know i like to see physical locations mm -hmm. very well uh because yep. <clears throat> much like we've talked about with virtual reality and growing inward lately uh i still want people to have that human interaction right that's a large Mm -hmm. large reason why we started this podcast to begin with. So I am glad to see people getting out and doing that. But for me, some of the deals are better online. Some of the deals are better in the store. I'm just going to go wherever that is. Uh, but yeah, that those, uh, some of the, some of those things, some of those issues that you were talking about, I wonder what it would, I wonder what it puts at risk. Putting up a semiconductor factory that quickly you have to imagine that there are a lot of there's a lot of that happening in order to be caught up on these chip shortages uh by next year right yeah yeah so yeah you're right i don't i don't know what the consequences are of us doing it so fast and what kind of corners are being cut i guess one of my things are is and this is something that i don't know if <laughs> this is going to be a thing or if not right is that we get so hell-bent on trying to meet demand that we exceed demand so quickly that yeah um that we now have a surplus um sure. which can cause a crash because there's now too much of um, there's too much of a product or a certain product or whatever like that. And now demand has lowered because of that. Now, I don't think that's actually going to happen because, um, there have been plenty of statistics that have shown that, um, demand is going to continuously grow as, especially as technology advances more and we put out more technological product. <clears throat> Um, yeah. that's probably not going to happen, but it does scare me a little bit because of, you know, if that happens, that can cause like an adverse effect, which can essentially get us back into what we are in right now, where we have tons of supply. Um, but in, but then, um, there's, uh, we have tons of supply, but then but there are less things actually being able to be shipped out to the customers because yeah. uh, factories and other manufacturers are too scared to actually use said parts. Um, sure. Or they're <laughs> limiting the amount that they create to keep the demand high instead of, yeah. you know, flooding the market with a whole bunch of stuff. Sure. Um, so, that is something that, you know, it, it is a little bit of a fear for me and, you know, something that I think about. But otherwise, though, I think, um, uh, I think, you know, these, I think that is something that a lot of these, also these uh, semiconductor companies are actually thinking about, too, is yeah. that, you know, what if we over extend ourselves? Because, yeah. you know, these are expensive. <clears throat> it's expensive to build it out. Ex even if you're making a lot of money currently right now just because of the demand. Um, sure. But you're also losing money too because that's potential customers that you're losing. Yeah. Uh, because Those you can't meet the demand. Well, <clears throat> but, you know, if they overextend, yeah. And then there's not a demand. Those factories go right back to where they came from. You know, nothing yep. out of business. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It will be <clears throat> interesting to see how this all plays out over the next year, but obviously we're all dealing with it right now. So if you haven't done your holiday shopping yet, and some of it includes technology, mm -hmm. uh, you're too late. <laughs> Quite honestly. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah. <laughs> so definitely jump on it now or put a, a or just get a nice gift card. <laughs> you know, yeah, something like exactly. That. Get a get a good old gift card or you know, find different creative ways. Etsy is a great place. So you know, get Etsy creative. Is, oh, yeah, that's a good Make idea, it. man. It's thoughtful. Mm -hmm. I like that. I'm gonna check that out mm -hmm. actually. Um, well, let's talk about the holiday that we just had. Thanksgiving. I know mm -hmm. you had some things that you wanted to speak on in regard to the week leading up to it, right? Well, while yeah. you do that, yeah. I'm going to finish these good, clean local wings from O'Malley's. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, my week's been kind of interesting. Um, as I kind of talked about a little bit earlier, um, was that um, this week was weird because it was the first It's it's probably the first time in my career of working um, that I have actually had not just Thursday, but also Friday off. And so, right. you know, with that mentality of like, wow, I'm, I'm going to have a four day weekend. I've never had this before. It's so, it put my brain in like a weird spot. <laughs> to explain, where, explain why that is first though. Explain why that is to everybody that you had not had mm. Friday off before because because you haven't um, been in retail specific like directly for a while true true but i mean i guess like you know when i was a teenager i was in retail right so i was in retail for my whole uh part-time career if that makes any sense but uh and then when i moved to um uh doing it for a corporate office um since i was still support uh, I was required to uh, work the same hours as the stores just to make sure that, you know, if something goes on, I'm there to um, facilitate the fix and not on some sort of, you know, and not on vacation, essentially. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's that's kind of the main reason. Like my whole career has just been built up for that. So mm -hmm. um, I never... Um, I never actually got that chance. And actually thinking about it, I think um, <laughs> it's actually weird thinking about it, but I think uh, even when I uh, worked for as a contractor for a, a company or whatever like that, I believe that uh, I still had to work that Friday because you know, I was a contract and I was doing overnight shift and I was doing the overnight shift and I had to uh, had to work, you know, technically I got the beginning of Friday, but I slept from that time. But yeah, um, right. I forgot that I, yeah, I still had to work that time just because of how it all worked out. Mm -hmm. Well, so yeah, I've always found the most demoralizing thing <clears throat> in those positions is all of America acts like everybody has those days off, you know, mm -hmm. all 10 federal holidays. They act like everyone has them off when quite honestly, the majority of people don't, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. A lot of people do not <clears throat> get those days off and they're the lower scale, the totem pole in the overall economy, typically not always, <clears throat> but, um, and that makes it tough. I felt like that was always the most demoralizing thing to me, especially putting in stories about how Americans are at home today with their families while yeah. I was at work producing the show talking about that, right? <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. So, it it really kind of was, you know. And you have, like, friends and family that are off. And so – and I think that's the other thing, right, is, like, especially – when it comes to Thanksgiving, right? Because, you know, you're enjoying your family time, but if you work at a job to where you have to get up early, you can't, there's that thought in the back of your head um, that a lot of your family members may have, may not have is I have to work in the morning, so I can't stay up as late. Right? You know, yeah. even though, you know, we all get that food coma at the end of Thanksgiving, but um, <laughs> <laughs> we do. Oh, um, sure. But, uh, you know, you just have that thought process of like, I can't stay up as long. I can't, 
I can't do this. I can't do that. Um, and so I feel like you kind of put yourself in a box. Um, because it, a box and it makes you not being able to like fully enjoy the holiday because you know you have to work uh, that next day. Um, so, uh, yeah, that yep. for me it was, or go ahead. Sorry. Well, no, I mean, I was just going to say, like, you know, um, working overnight for three years, that was. Part of the reason we started our annual 4th of July celebration the day before was because on actual 4th of July, I have to go into work while everybody's still celebrating. At 11, mm-hmm. Grant was late, 11 p.m. or so. Mm-hmm. But when I was producing our morning newscast, you know, oh, cool, I get Christmas off. But guess what? Going into work 11 p.m. on the night of Christmas, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, Christmas Eve, I'm getting off work at 7 a.m. I'm sleeping throughout the whole day, waking up just before the Christmas Eve services, Mm -hmm. spending some time with family, and then everybody goes to bed. You go to bed. You wake up. You do the Christmas thing. You're tired. You take a nap, and then you have to go into work that night. Yep. You know? It's not much of a vacation. It's not much of a holiday, (laughs) really. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) It's almost more hectic than an average work day. Um, So definitely, like... It's interesting because it seems like it's an American standard, but having that day off or having any any of these, having all federal holidays off, man, you, I feel like, you know, you've made it when you get to a point like that, you know? Yeah. It's so but we as a culture take it for granted, really. Yeah. Yeah. No, we think that everybody just has all that. And that's just normal, but like you said earlier, it's it's not for a, a very decent portion of people. Um, and it really does, you know. I think I think that's the other thing. Like we just don't think about is like what kind of effect that has on people when you can't, um. When you aren't able to fully enjoy your holiday, when you know you have to work the next day, like it's, it's, it's different, I guess. I think it's uh, the reason why I'm kind of bringing this up and kind of thinking about it too, is that like, if you have a, like, if you have a work schedule to where you have, you know, say, I don't know, just, just thinking out loud, but like, say, instead of having it to where it's, you know, Saturday and Sunday is your weekend, right? You have it to where Wednesday and say, um, Saturday, those are your weekend days or off days. Mm. I feel like those Mm. are a little bit different, right? Because those are literally off days when it's a holiday, most holidays, well, not I'm not going to say most, but some holidays and a lot of the ones that usually most people get off are very much family holidays. And <laughs> there are holidays that are spent doing a lot of um, a lot of other things. Mm-hmm. So you don't fully get that day, I should say. It's more along oh, the lines okay. that you're spending it with your family and and you're doing other things or whatever like that, but it's not like an actual, it's an off day of not working, but it's a day of working in a different manner, if that makes any sense. Um, Or at least this this is my thought process on it. Sure. So you feel like the days that we're given off, the intention is that you're still working just as hard, but for family purposes, and that's why you're giving it off rather than a day of rest, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah exactly exactly and so and then you still have that lingering thought process of oh wait i still have to work the next day Mm -hmm. right so and that is largely true um but there are exceptions like memorial day mm -hmm. right labor day Uh, yeah these are that's very true moments like we honor the labor movement with Labor Day. Memorial Day, we remember those who fought for us. My new job, I'm very <clears throat> proud to say this, 
longtime viewers of the Ketchup Podcast know um, that we actually, as of this past year, celebrate Juneteenth now. So the whole place gets off a day off for Juneteenth, which is awesome. You know? mm-hmm. That's amazing. So, yeah. Um, so, <clears throat> yeah, I, I get where you're coming from. And you're just saying it's kind of weird. It's been an adjustment for you to actually relax and take advantage of the time. Is that what you're kind of getting at? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it is. It is. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, just, it's been a weird um, thought process and thought change that I've had to go through, um, you know, than I had beforehand because of how, <sighs> excuse me. Oh, oh man. How, <laughs> Uh, because of how things have been in the past. So, um, yeah, it's it's been really weird, but I will say that it's actually been very, very relaxing for me um, because I That's haven't good, had that constant fear of like, crap, I, uh, I need <laughs> to work tomorrow or, mm-hmm. you know, what have you. Mm-hmm. Well, hopefully all of you, I've been able to get some of that as well. My mouth <laughs> looks crazy. <laughs> um, the official feel of the ketchup podcast. O'Malley's wings, man. Really. <laughs> but the official. I, mean, I get official. where you're coming from. I get where you're coming from. Um, and look, you know, I would only get. Four, maybe five federal holidays off. My old job, now I get all of them off. I'm not used to that yet. Mm. Mm-hmm. Um, I think in my in news, I was going to have to work Thanksgiving and the day after, I think. Um, um, I want to say that they had me on the schedule to produce the morning show on New Year's Day. Again. Oh, right? Man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, <clears throat> I haven't had New Year's Day off. Since uh, 2016 into 2017. And that was because it fell on a weekend, I believe. Um, <laughs> which it is again <clears throat> this time. But mm-hmm. yeah. Um, otherwise, I probably would have worked then too. But yeah, this uh, it's, it's a different set of circumstances. And so I get it. It is a little different and it's something extra to be thankful for to actually slow down and you're like man you're almost like ricky bobby you're like what do i do with my hands you know um Mm -hmm. you don't even know what to do because you have all that freedom and that's something i've been experiencing my new job is with uh all these new opportunities i have to give you a perfect example you know i woke up the other day of the show and I knew I was like right downtown, <clears throat> right where we need to load in and whatever. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, I'm just going to wake up, work eight to four. Part of that was at the office. So I had to drive down there mm-hmm. and just have everything loaded up, ready to go. So I worked eight to four, no lunch, whatever. Got done, worked out, went over to the venue, loaded in, sound checked, and the rest was history, you know, and it, having that e- mm-hmm. extra freedom man just having that like i've been more productive in a less amount of time uh because of that and yeah. it's allowed me to enjoy more of these things like what you're talking about man and really you know i wanted to add on um kind of what we talked about in the last episode so <clears throat> i that day that i was at the office i was shadowing so i'm still learning obviously this is a new job uh, and they want me a shadow, somebody from every position. So like Monday, when this mm-hmm. episode goes live on the podcast streaming services, I'll be shadowing um, <clears throat> the dentist department. Okay. Dentistry. Mm. Okay. And so the other day I was uh, shadowing integrated care. And this is really cool. What uh, the health clinic I work for does. Um, they will interact with any patient regardless of what they came in for if they came in for a toothache but they say some things or 
<clears throat> have some concerning behavior, you know. Um, mm-hmm. And great care has to go and, and speak with them and see how they can help them, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. If there's a disturbance out in the lobby, there were a couple of these while I was shadowing that day. They have to go and confront these people, okay, and interact with them. Um, but there were there were a couple of people that were just straight up psychotic, you know. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> I mean, I'm diagnosed with schizophrenia, two of them. Um, and you know, you just wonder, you know, why why them? You know, uh, some of it largely, or some of it could be drug use. You know, um, one <clears throat> person, yeah, or um, maybe maybe it's uh. Feet, you know, uh, something that was done when they were in the womb by their parents, you know, mm-hmm. um, things like that. And you just wonder what, why them, you know, uh, and it was tough. It was tough to see it. It was a uh, kind of a mood killer, especially the day before, uh, the holiday, mm-hmm. but you know, you, you, <clears throat> these are people that deal with this every day, both on the patient side and the doctor side. And um, it just made me thankful to be of health that I am, that we are, you know, be born uh, with the many blessings that we have uh, and have been able to use as positive impact in our own lives and others. And uh, yeah, it just had me thinking about that, man. It's, it's a, a tough thing to watch. And I definitely... You know, cannot shout out enough the people who work in behavioral health uh, in a in a clinic that serves largely underserved minorities. Uh, to be honest, and uh, their situations are oftentimes much worse than what you see at a, uh, a counselor's office. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. uh, so <clears throat> yeah. Um, so that just that just put a very interesting spin on my thankfulness for the holiday, you know. Um, yeah. And <clears throat> yeah, just some of the things these people go through is crazy. So, wanted to reiterate that um, based off what we talked about the previous week, and I also wanted to say that you know I'm very excited because speaking of New Year's Day, I have New Year's Eve off because New Year's Day falls on a Saturday. Uh, mm-hmm. and my goal is to come down and see all my friends <laughs> in Texas uh, on New Year's Eve, and uh, we'll do a little special catch-up broadcast <laughs> as well. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so uh, that'll be an awesome opportunity that I can't wait. And I'm glad we're going to get to do that. Um, and yeah, so that that really is what I'm looking forward to the most uh, this holiday season. And uh, I can't wait for that. Hopefully this snuffle up, I guess, action will be long gone by then. <clears throat> long mm-hmm. gone. Yeah, man, I think we had a good discussion on a lot of different topics tonight. It's really good stuff. Yeah. Um, thank you guys so much for joining in on it with us. Uh, really, the two key things we want you to do, please uh, leave us a rating and review. It will let us know how we're doing, and it will tell the algorithm that people are reacting to the show. Uh, and share it with more people. So wherever you're listening to us, leave us a quick rating and review and subscribe if you like us. And then check out our website, nosignalrocks.com. There's a drop-down menu. You can find the Ketchup Podcast. This is also linked in the description of this episode. Uh, you'll find all of our videos, all of our episodes, and all of our merch and apparel in one place. Those are two best ways to support us. And, of course, liking us on Facebook and getting in on the live stream. So. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you for watching. And we'll catch up with you next week.